Hello everyone, I'm James. This is my video on uh, a little bit of redstone, just like pre-knowledge. I know there's a lot of people out there who uh, don't feel confident at all. I know people on my server especially don't feel confident at all doing redstone. Uh, there's really no reason um, to not feel confident doing this stuff because it's very simple. Um, but um, I, I, I suspect most people watching this video would be really new at redstone, so we're just going to get into some of the basics. Then we can go into more complicated stuff over there, but it's really not that complicated. It really isn't. So just follow along. If you need to go back, um, just go back to things you need to see. This is also just a great way to, if you're building something um, and you need to understand a certain concepts, you're building a machine on your own, you can come back here to look at the basics. So we'll start over here. Um, so I guess I guess we can look at the basics. Uh, there's a couple types of redstone in this game. Um, the basic types are this are these two always powered on blocks so these will always activate a redstone device or something that has to do with redstone so let's take this dispenser for example these will always activate the dispenser as long as conditions are met as long as certain conditions are met as you can see the condition has been met and it will fire off that and uh, these will happen a couple times in the video so just keep in mind when those fire that means the condition has been met um, and redstone torches, they're always on. As long as conditions are met, again, it'll fire off. Redstone dust is uh, obviously different. Let's go ahead and put this in the kind of the same position. It's not going to meet any conditions, so that's not going to fire off. All right, so what are the conditions for redstone to be active or to work with machines? So they ha it has to, for most things, it has to already be placed in the world. So let's just use the dispensers. And then there must be power into either itself, this block, because watch. I'll show you in a second, I guess. There's a couple examples over here. Powered into the block, see so yeah, it's pointing into the block, or into the block next to it. Like that. So, yeah. Those are the conditions that we need to meet in order to use these different blocks. Um, these are a little bit different because they turn off when you put a redstone signal, but they're all in the same category of how they're powered. They're all powered the same way. All right, so let's get into some simple examples. Um, we'll just go through pistons first. Um, as you can see, this piston is being powered from on top of the block. Here, it's also powered from on top of the block. And here, you can see it can't be powered from here. You can see the redstone dust isn't pointing into it, which means it won't be powered. Also, the redstone dust is powering all three of these blocks, so that. It's powering all these three blocks because it's on top of them, but it is not powering this block underneath. If it was powering this block underneath, this would pop up. So, as you can see, you, you'll kind of understand the, uh, the nuances as you just kind of watch this video. Um, this, this one is fine because this block is being powered. And this one's fine because it has a redstone torch on top, which is, which is a weird thing. Uh, redstone torches act really oddly. As you can see, they power the block they're standing on, and if they're standing up like this, they'll also power the block above them. You should keep in mind, I guess what you can take away from this, is a torch can turn any block that is touching on top or the bottom into a redstone block, either temporary or permanently, depending on how your circuit's set up. So. That's, this essentially, if this was an iron block, this is essentially just a redstone block. There's no difference. Without that redstone torch, it just becomes an iron block like that. It does nothing. For the redstone torch, it becomes basically that. So, anyways, that's just a little bit of an example of how torches work. Again, they're kind of uh, one of the more confusing parts of the redstone. But as soon as you understand that, that's all they do. That's it. That's what they do. They can also turn off, which we'll go over uh, a little bit later, which is very helpful. But this is how they basically work. They turn redstone. They turn blocks above them and below them into redstone blocks. Um, these powered redstone blocks. This is what you need to remember. So now that this is kind of explained, you can see why this redstone torch actually is just turning this stone brick into a redstone block. As you can see, it can power it like that. So essentially, that brick is a redstone block when that torch is on top of it. Take the torch off. It turns off. Put it back on. This turns into a redstone block again. And I, I mean this, like this block of redstone. Um, as you can see, the dispensers also work this way. 
So again, all those blocks over there work the same way. I just want to show you, kind of be able to prove it. See, it doesn't power it there. It also doesn't power the piston over here. So yeah, just keep that in mind that this will not power it because these blocks are being powered by redstone dust. Redstone dust acts differently than redstone torches. Otherwise, they, well, they'd be the same thing. Just, the dust cannot power through blocks. It can only power the block it's sitting on. Um, unless you have a repeater to pick up the signal, which is a little bit, again, it's a little bit confusing. But it, it, that's only because it's powering the block. So it can only, I guess the best way to put it, is redstone dust can only power blocks in this horizontal way. They can't power blocks vertically except for the block that they're sitting on, which makes sense because that's the block they're sitting on. So, for example, this block is powered right here, which means if we put a piston, although it's a little bit hard to, yeah, I think right here will work, put a piston there, this block is powered now, basically turned into a block of redstone, and it will be able to activate other blocks, but the block above it will not, because you can, see, you can kind of think of it this way, I guess. The redstone dust is only this high, so it can't power anything above it. It's not like touching it. The redstone torch, you see the little magical effects, or the little redstone effects, it's kind of like they want to leap up to the next block. You can think of it that way. I think that's useful. Um, again, redstone blocks act a lot like powered redstone. They can't power through blocks very well. Um, they act a little bit differently, but uh, it's just an always on block. All right, so now into some more blocks that act like redstone. Um, so basically this detector rail, if you put something on top of it, it'll act like a piece of redstone dust. Um, it cannot go through blocks, so it will not power this block above it. Will not be powered. But I'm pretty sure you can piston power it. Yep. It'll kind of act. It'll kind of act like a torch, but not quite. If it were acting like a torch, it would power this block, turn this block into a redstone, like one of these blocks of redstone, and power this piston. But it doesn't, it can only power the block immediately above it, and it will not spread uh, power into any other blocks, which redstone dust uh, does not do. It's a little bit different. Uh, activator rail, or detector rails are normally not used that often in redstone machines, so it's not something you need to really worry about. But if you're curious, um, that's how they work. Trap chests, I will explain a little bit later, but they kind of act as redstone. Okay, so kind of explain it over here. As you can see, uh, like I was talking about earlier, redstone dust can't power this block. It does not turn this block into a redstone block. It can climb over the block, but if we put a block here like that, see, it's it's not powering this block. It, it can climb like that. See the little trail climbing up? But it can't actually power this. It isn't turning this block into one of these blocks of redstone. It's just touching it. This block, however, is powered. A little bit weird, right? A little bit weird. It kind of acts like this detector rail, in a way, when you're powering this block. It acts like there's a detector rail right there. That could be a way you could think of it. Um, so you could basically, what I mean is you can power this machine, but you can't receive a redstone dust signal through it. You can receive a torch signal through it. Again, like I was saying for this example, doesn't redstone dust doesn't like to pass through blocks um, like that. Trap chests, see, they don't pass through blocks either. It kind of acts like redstone dust. It won't pass through the block. So if it did, this little piece of redstone would be lighting up. All right, so now to repeaters. Um, repeaters act pretty pretty regularly. They're not too complicated at all. They are one of the more simple pieces of redstone. So repeaters are a friendly, friendly tool. They can be set a delay. And if you ever hear in a redstone video, delay set to one tick, that means you're not right clicking it at all, you just place it down. So they're by default one tick. Two ticks is one click. Three ticks is three click. Four ticks is three clicks. All right, so torches, I mean uh, repeaters, th these are just used to power them. You can also use blocks of redstone like that or a redstone wire. Makes no difference, so I'm just using torches. Um, these can uh, power through blocks. See the redstone dust gets picked up on the outside. As we saw earlier, the redstone dust can power this piston, but it can't power past it, which can be very useful, especially if you're doing a close kind of a 
you know, you got two things set up on different sides and you need to make sure that wires, that signals aren't going to pass through and you don't want this powered. If you had a repeater, um, you can see this gets powered over here, even though it's not, you know, I, I didn't quite set it up right, but you know what I mean. See, it would power right there. Um, but yeah, that's just something to keep in mind. It's a, it works a little bit different than redstone. It'll pass it through and it will actually turn this block into a block of redstone, like that. That's essentially what it's doing when it's powered on. It can also, yep, like, like you can see, it can go up. See over here with the redstone dust, it couldn't, like I was talking about right there. Oops. Shoot. Like that. See, it can't go up on redstone dust. But with the repeater, it absolutely can. Like that. You can kind of stack it up like this, and you could go up a whole staircase or whatever. Pretty cool. See, it doesn't power this block. It only powers this block. It works just like a block of redstone when it powers something. Like that. It still powers to the side, and it still will power this piston, but it won't power this block. This block is not powered because it's not touching it. But everything on top of it and around it is powered. All right, another thing to note here is glass. Uh, repeaters and most redstone signals will not go through glass or any transparent block, like a piston or a chest. So basically, this repeater does not turn glass into a redstone block. It's just something you need to think of. It doesn't power any signals next to it. That's just touching. It doesn't power anything next to it. it does power below it. I'm sorry. <laughs> it, it. That's not that important. Again, this will never. You'll never do this. That'll never be something that really happens unless you're doing a very complicated machine. I just say, don't worry about it. Just imagine it doesn't uh, power anything. So glass is not a good block to use with redstone for the most part unless you're experienced. And obviously, it doesn't power across a block, so it won't turn an air block into a block of redstone. It'll only uh, turn a solid block into a block of redstone. So transparent and air blocks kind of act the same, in, in a way. I think this will actually also power, yep. Um, so, okay, so I guess we can kind of summarize it that way. Air blocks and transparent blocks act similarly as to they will be, they'll power beneath them it's a bit odd. I'm not sh I think that's still a bug. I that should probably be removed. It doesn't make any sense. Um, but it will not uh, power anywhere above it or over the sides. So, not very important right there. That's a probably the least important thing. So don't b really bother reminding, remembering that. But it's here in this video in case you want to come back to it. Um, if you need to do a certain machine where you want to power something below but not above. All right. So now we'll see them work with pistons. Um, it's kind of they're already pre-set up. So powered straight into it, it'll power it. But since it's a transparent block, it won't power the one next to it. However, this one will power it next to it. Because this is a solid block, it turns it into a block of redstone. This one will also power underneath. Uh, not important, again, but I'm just showing you for reference. Um, it'll power this one, which turns this into a redstone block, kind of like this. Oops. And as you can see, when you power a block, that a redstone torch is sitting on top of, it will turn it off, um, which can help you stack up like this, on, off, on, off, on, off, like that. Um, you can also set some inverted stuff, so if you wanted something to be on all the time, but then when you press a button it turns off, um, you can use redstone torches for that, so that's pretty cool. Um, I guess we could show some machines later and maybe a different video uh, as to when you'd use that specifically, but this is just an overview, of course. It's running a little bit long, so hopefully I cut it down a little bit. Um, I'm going to stop rambling, so anyways, here we go. <clears throat> now this, uh, this kind of just shows you all the blocks it powers. It also will power this one too, which I wasn't able to show. So it'll uh, basically, this will power every single block around it. It basically turns that into a block of redstone. Everything is powered everywhere, underneath, on top, all that good jazz. So pretty cool. Now, we're coming to a little bit more complicated stuff here, so if you just wanted the basics on how redstone worked just by itself, that was that. That's basically all there is to it. Not really that much, um, to be honest. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, it took me a little while to put together, so go ahead and leave a like if you liked it. Share it with your friends if they uh, need to learn how to do redstone. Hopefully I'll do some more episodes on uh, basic piston doors and how to set those up and how it would look like going about making your own redstone contraptions, which is really what 
everybody in the Redstone community wants you to do is figure out your own way to do it. Stop bothering us. So, yeah, thanks for joining me. Um, hope this was a good helpful episode, and uh, see you later.